Andre might have had one of his best defensive games on James, um, but obviously the intentional fouling. How much of a chess game were you in in your own head to figure out, should I leave him in, should I take him out? Well, I mean, I don't want to speak for, for Mike on it or what his intentions were. It may have been, you know, just because of Andre's free throw shooting percentage, but to me, I thought it was a, a great sign of respect to get uh, Andre off of Harden, to be honest with you. Um, and Mike may not feel that way, so I don't want to speak for them. But, um, you know, I think in them doing that, um, you know, Andre's done a great job all series long. Um, I thought it was important as a coach as I show confidence in him. Um, he did make a couple of them. There wasn't a huge disparity, I don't think, in, in when they did that. Probably broke the momentum of the game a little bit with what was going on. But, you know, Andre's obviously the job that he's done has, has been remarkable the whole entire series. And um, this is a great opportunity for him, I think, to learn and grow through some of that. Eric Horney, Oklahoma. Billy, you've talked at times this year about you know, putting the ball in Victor's hands in the second unit. I uh, wanted to know what was the reason for not – using him more as the, as the second unit point guard throughout this series and particularly tonight? The second unit point guard? Yeah. Uh, Victor Just because we, we've used Samaj and, and um, Norris, really, those guys have been our backup point guard. That's kind of what we've done most of the year. So um, just kind of went with that. I asked that question because of the, the, the fall off when, when Russell comes off the floor and, and the ball's not in Russell's hands. I mean, do you think you could get more – out of that second unit when, when Russell's not out there, if you have Victor handling the ball more? I mean, you may, but you also may get into a situation with Victor with the ball where we're getting the ball to him a little bit later and trying to get him to create, you know, um, where he's off the ball a little bit. I thought Victor played, you know, two very, very good games here, you know, back to back. Um, you know, no question, I thought our second unit played extremely well um, in game three, and we probably didn't play particularly well tonight as a group. Yeah, Barry Trammell with the Oklahoma. Uh, Billy, uh, similar to that question, Westbrook goes out for the second time in three games and things just fall apart twice. Your first team, your first team uh, out playing Houston, but then they're giving away leads when Russell goes out. Is that a sign just they've got more, de they've got more quality depth than you? What can you do to overcome what's obviously becoming a trend? Yeah, I mean, I'm not really quite sure how to answer that. Um... You know, I think there's been some moments our second unit's done a really, really good job. Um, you know, I thought our second unit played really, really well in game three. Th this was a game where, you know, to your point, listen, I, I don't think that that maybe uh, that there's any difference. The, the whole year when Russell Westbrook's off the floor is a differential on our team. And, and for most teams, when you take a player of his caliber, caliber off the floor, there's going to be a differential. So um, there's no question that um, – when Russell's out there, we're going to end up being a lot better. But, you know, to say that there's not going to be a differential, uh, I don't know. I, I thought, to your point, though, that the second unit could have played better. They played much better, you know, last game. Um, you know, I thought we had some opportunities uh, for that second unit to kind of step up and make some plays. The ball didn't go in the basket. Um, the one thing about Houston is that they've got, obviously, a very, very explosive offensive scoring team, whether it be their first or second unit doesn't make a difference. Uh, and sometimes for us, that that, um, that that group I thought played well, but I didn't think we made necessarily particularly shots in that situation. Billy, Brett Dawson with Oklahoma. Just in those, the last minute and a half or so from some of the shots you guys got, the, the foul on Nene, would you rather have done one thing or the other there in terms of letting him score or, or fouling him harder? It, it, what did you think about your decision making down the stretch? Um, you know, I, I thought a couple times Russell, we needed to help him in terms of like the way the floor was spaced. We needed someone dive into the basket hard, the floor to be open. They were sending two players to him. Uh, I thought Andre made a really, really good play when Russell threw it back to him and he drove it and he kind of got it to Steven. Um, I, I couldn't tell exactly where Steven was at. I know the ball kind of came back out to Russell, but we needed to have some presence at the basket, especially with them sending two to um, uh, Russell, you know, towards the end of the game. I think the other part of that was I thought we made some good decisions in terms of when we made the three and cut it to one, we had an opportunity or gave ourselves an opportunity to get maybe a quick trap or a steal. But once the ball crossed half court, we needed to foul. And I think probably at that last play, Jeremy should have, and I, I, I want to go back and look at the tape, so I don't want to pass judgment on this, but if he could have maybe wrapped him up and prevented him from even getting the shot up, that would have certainly been helpful, would have forced him to make two free throws. I don't think what you want to do in that situation is give
give an end one, you're better off just even letting them go in if you don't feel like you can wrap them up and it's still a three point game and we can call timeout. So once they got it to four, it kind of gave it, made it a two possession game. Fred Gatz, Norman Transcript. Uh, Billy, with about a half a minute left, Russell put up those those back to back threes, looking like he was trying to draw a foul there. What was what was your guys' objective on on those possessions, and and were you, were you okay well, with I, those shots? Well, I mean, I, listen, I I think in both of those situations, you know, somebody diving to the the basket or, or creating a post presence at the basket, because I think any time you know that when it's two sent to him. Generally, when the floor is open, the, the lane's open to dive. So dive into the basket and creating a, a presence at the rim is important. Uh, I think the other part of it is like, listen, this has been a huge part of the series, and I'm not taking anything away because I think the officials are in a very, very difficult spot. But when you're getting 12 free throws per game on being fouled at the three-point line, uh, I have no problem with Russell trying the same thing because Lou Williams gets it and Harden gets it all the time and I'm not saying that that's that's why but you know if you go back to game one to game two to three to four and you look at the amount of free throws they're taking on fouled three-point shots in relationship to when we've done it um, I have no problem with, with Russell doing that and there may have I, listen I'll, I'll go back and watch the film to determine whether or not I feel like he was fouled or not you know when it's at the other end of the floor in the second half it's very very difficult but Lou Williams is foul three and, and Harden's foul three late in the game. I mean, those are huge free throws. You know, th- th- those, are u- those, those are huge free throws. And I think the, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not, like, being critical of the officials here at all because I think they're put into a difficult situation. All I'm saying is I don't blame Russell when he feels a hand in on him to try to do the same thing.